for joining us from various various parts of the world uh, as you are aware uh, this antarashtriya sahyog parishad organizes this monthly lecture to uh, better understand our roma brothers and sisters lives in various parts of the world and also to create awareness among our uh, indian friends about uh, we have so far organized 14 of these uh, lectures and to the 15th one in this uh, collection i would just like to mention that uh, roma's uh, migrated from india thousands of years back we had organized in 2018 an international conference to commemorate at the millennium of migration of romas from india but we understand and the formations are available that romas migrated from india in different phases and even before 1000 years when i was in bulgaria and macedonia during my conversation people used to mention about roma's migration to that country during the period of alexander so we we know that these movements or these travels have been over a period of and i was just going through uh, some details recently that even in 20th century there has been this travel of romas within europe from east to west so the movement of uh, romas from india had been to europe in different centuries and this has been uh, confirmed during the uh, lectures of various people from different countries so today's lecture is uh, very interesting which is going to touch upon the recent migration of roma to europe and it also will touch upon the preservation of romani language and identity its causes and consequences and we are really honored to have an eminent roma scholar who is going to deliver this lecture that is dr diana kirilova she has done her phd in anthropology and philosophy in education science from sorbonne university paris and she uh, has attended our uh, some of our monthly lectures so she is aware about uh, uh, the interest which our uh, arsp friends and roma brothers and sisters have been learning more about roma's lives in different parts of the world i would also like to mention that uh, we do uh, circulate a fortnightly newsletter which covers a gist of uh, today's uh, which covers important news about roma in different parts of europe and other parts of the world also and also just today's uh, lecture is included in that so i would appreciate if uh, you have any questions or your comments do come with that and also provide us suggestions how to improve our this outreach activity with roma as brothers and sisters across the world once again i like to welcome you all for today's event because your presence and your participation is the uh, key for success of such events with this uh, i like to uh, invite jamir our uh, research caller who is going to talk about uh, who is going to introduce today's speaker that is dr diana krilova jamir the floor is yours thank you very much sir and uh, i and i extend my sincere thanks to everyone and uh, i find that the dr ramesh arya ji the director of ministry of culture he also joined this uh, lecture thank you very much sir and some uh, soon will join us so um, i welcome 
uh, all of you for uh, attending this uh, 15th virtual lecture of the lecture series on the subject of the recent migration of Roma to Europe and preservation of Romani language identity and causes and consequences. Today we have the speaker, uh, uh, Dina, uh, Dr. Dina Krilova, and she'll deliver the lecture. So, <clears throat> uh, Krilova teaches Romology uh, in uh, including the Romani language and culture uh, in the National uh, Institute of Oriental Languages and Civilization in Paris. She also teaches uh, Romani language in the Central European University in Budapest. And she has expertise in uh, anthropology, philosophy, and sociology, and education science. Uh, so uh, she has written a different a number of articles uh, pertaining to Roma uh, people and the different aspects of the Roma community. And she did also some uh, fieldwork jobs and fieldwork research studies in France and Bulgaria and elsewhere in Europe. So um, as you may know, Roma are one of Europe's oldest and largest ethnic minorities, and also one of the most disadvantaged and marginalized uh, community. And it is not uh, wrong to say that uh, the Roma community is uh, most wronged transnational uh, group of people in Europe. Across the continent, Romani people are routinely denied their rights to housing, healthcare, education, work, employment, and so on, so on and so forth. Many are subjected to forced evictions, racist violence, and ill treatment by the authorities, by the police department, and by the several other uh, estate stakeholders. As the topics, today's topic for discussion is uh, the recent migration of Roma to Europe. So I would like to touch upon the, I would like to touch upon the um, historical, uh, you know, I mean, the migration of Roma from India to Europe. As she will, uh, dis, uh, she'll deliver the lecture uh, uh, on the recent migration to Europe or the uh, inter-migration to Europe in her lecture. But uh, I would like to briefly uh, give a bird's eye view about the uh, Roma started from India to Ghazni. Uh, that is, Ghazni means the Zabulistan at that point of time. Now it is known as Afghanistan, and uh, they traveled towards the direction of Persia, uh, Khurasan, that is known that time, Khurasan, the Syria, Iraq, and through Armenia uh, into the Western Byzantine territories like Macedonia, Albania, Croatia, uh, Greece, and the Turkey, uh, in the Western Byzantine territories. From there to the Balkans, to the uh, Europe, they reached Europe in the 15th century. There is a reference to arrival of 120 Roma, the very initial reference uh, of the arrival of 120 Romani people in Romanian city, Brasov, that is known at that time, the Brasov in 1416. So, uh, and then from there, they moved to the central European countries. And there is a one reference by the German official who wrote about the encountering Roma near Hamburg in 1417. Roma were also found in the city of Deventer, Poland in 1420 and in Belgium in 1422. Thereafter, they uh, moved further and they entered a space in Slovakia in 1423. And from there, they, uh, they, uh, they traveled to the uh, different European countries and settled in France in the middle of the 15th century. There are some written references or indirect reference of the uh, uh, emergence of Roma community in France. That time they were known as Bohemian or Zyguner. So uh, there is a very great uh, poet, uh, the French poet, the Valiant de Tours, uh, who equated Bohemians, you know, Mesner, now known as Roma, Bohemians with Indians in his poem in 1450. That was also uh, a very, uh, good, uh, accept widely accepted reference uh, 
that shows the uh, emergence of Roma community in France before 1450. There was also indirect reference in 1427 uh, in the diary of an inhabitant of Paris that uh, mentions that uh, the first Roma arrived in Saint Denis near Paris in 1420 uh, in 1427. Then uh, there are different they, uh, there are the well documented records which uh, uh, which talk about the arrival of Roma in a different part of the world, uh, different part of uh, different countries of Europe, and then after from Europe to uh, Romania to uh, they made a migration from Romania to the different part of the world, even the United States of America or the Latin American countries. Uh, the second large, the second largest migration wave uh, was in the 19th century, when uh, the, the Roma moved from the central and southeastern European countries to the Western European countries. That that I hope I don't want to uh, go further. That I hope the uh, Dr. Krilova uh, she will speak uh, speak about in, in her lecture. So. Uh, the today topic is, uh, she also talked about the identity, maybe in the present contemporary situations, uh, in the contemporary time or in the past, uh, how, uh, their, how their identity was um, uh, the compromised and their rights and the fundamental rights were transgressed and violated. So um, as well as uh, the language, the, the, as the, being a linguist, she herself uh, is a linguist. So she'll speak about the, how, what are the changes took place in the Romani language or how the Romani language shaped in the European countries as she teaches the uh, linguistic history as well. So um, uh, without uh, going further or delving oh, yeah. further, so I, uh, request the Rajesh Sajdeva sir to proceed with the uh, this uh, lecture, and I thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Jamir, for uh, this uh, brief introduction about the uh, speaker as well as about the uh, topic. And uh, I must say that uh, Roma, we need to commend Roma and Roma community for preserving their language and their traditions. Even after different parts of the world or away from India for more than a thousand years, we had some conferences where we were told about the different traditions in different parts of the world, which they still retain and which akin to what we follow in India. So without going further, now I will take this opportunity to welcome our guests, our speaker, uh, and an eminent uh, scholar uh, from Roma community, Dr. Uh, Diana Kirilova, to uh, present her uh, topic. So the floor is yours. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, yeah, we yes. can hear you. So hello everybody, I'm uh, Diana Kirilova. I'm uh, working in, uh, in Paris at uh, Inarco University at the section on Romani uh, language. Today I will present you the Roma migration to Europe and I will give you an uh, example with the France and uh, with the Roma people from Bulgaria, Macedonia, Bosnia, Kosovo and Serbia and uh, uh, the situation of their migration. I will give you the example uh, in, the in, the French, in the French cases. So, before to start to speak uh, with them uh, for the migration, we have uh, to know what does it mean and migration and immigration. The definition of migration in when a human being who is living in a, his home country decides to live or to move in another country for different reasons, for economic reason, for uh, to start a new life, uh, for studying, for for um, perhaps the human being is persecuted also in his home country uh, of a religion uh, reason or uh, ethnical reason. And this is one of the cause to migrate in another country. Uh, the immigration is when somebody is 
already in a guest country in abroad, uh, in the country uh, which he chose to move, and he's considered as immigrate. This is uh, the um, distinction of migration and immigration. What is the situation with Roma people, especially in Europe? We had a different vague of uh, migration uh, related to, to Roma people. One of them, it was in 75, when the Roma people from uh, Kosovo, Serbia, had a, a economical um, agreement with the French states to come in France and to work as a, a worker from abroad. This was one of the bag of migration, uh, which was in the 75. And we have a generation, one of two generation uh, of Roma people who are immigrated here from two or three generation. And they're really installed here. They have their houses, they have their work, and they're very well integrated in the French society. The second uh, vague of migration is in 98, 99, when uh, it was the cause of the uh, war in Kosovo. During the war in Kosovo, we had a uh, migration related with the persecution of religion uh, reason, ethnic reason, and the Roma uh, were one of the cases of this immigrant. They enter in France and they enter in the category as asylum seekers because in the 99 we had the uh, uh, 90 and 99 we had the, the uh, war in Kosovo as uh, most of you maybe know. And uh, this migration related to Roma people is considered as migration of uh, uh, reasons of um, ethnic reasons of religion reasons, and they had a right here in France to ask the asylum, to be as the asylum seekers. This is one of the category of the migrants of Roma people, the second category. And the third category is in uh, some of the uh, country in Europe, we had the country which joined the European Union as Romania, Bulgaria, uh, Hungary, and we had a migration uh, of Roma people, the case in France is this category of migration, it's, we have different categories in this case. We have the category of economic migrants. The people had a right to circulate without any documents and papers that they can enter in France and stay without visa, without uh, uh, regulation, but only three months. And if they have a, a job, they can stay regularly. And we have this category of migrants related to Roma people, which is the uh, uh, economic migration. And we have an elite migration, which is young Roma people who decide to go in Europe to make their study in another country or just to change their life. And they don't have any restriction related with documents, with visa as it was in the past. This is a short summary related with the situation of migration on Roma people. What is happened when they decide to go and to move in another country and especially in France? Do the migrations as they have dreamed, it's really reality because uh, uh, sometimes or very often the people who decide to go in abroad, they are thinking that this is the El Dorado. This is everything is very easy. Uh, they can um, have very easy uh, house. They can uh, have very easy a job. And uh, does it eat the uh, reality? Um, I will shortly explain you all the points related with the different cases on uh, migration. And uh, I'm really open to your question or uh, if you want to interrupt me for some question, please, you are free to do it. When the people uh, arrive in the new country, uh, 
I give an example with a short story in my PowerPoint presentation related with uh, Roma identity. Before to speak to Roma identity, I would like to give you a definition from Bayard uh, about the identity, which he, uh, he says that uh, um, there is not a natural identity which is imposed to us, but there is a different strategy identitaire. So, um, which are imposed to us by force. So in order to be, to find uh, integration in a new country, we are obliged to find a different strategy of our identity or playing with our identity. For instance, Arab people, when they are going to apply for a job, most of them, they do not like to say that they're from Roma origin because they have the obstacles for the discrimination. Discrimination and they're automatically rejected. They, so they can find a strategy to say simply, I'm Bulgarian, I'm Serbian, I'm Macedonian, I'm uh, Kosovar, but they, they really don't all, uh, want to show openly their identity. This is one case. Um, uh, when they uh, want to find some job, some house, they are really obliged to, to do not say their identity because they will be rejected and discriminated. Or they will never obtain a job or uh, a house. We need a time to establish a confidence between the uh, majority population and uh, the Roma people. And after, perhaps they can say openly, we are from Roma origin. They have to pay attention for the human factor uh, because the, the, we have a different category on Roma migrants. Uh, who wants to keep and to preserve Roma identity. What is the situation? The situation is as the person who uh, immigrated in France in the 75, in these years, it was the uh, economic migration, but to come here to work, they're really totally integrated as, as, as I said, uh, when I start my lecture. These people keeping fully the Roma identity and the Romani culture. This is the people who are from Kosovo, Bosnia, Macedonia, and Serbia. Some of them who immigrated in France in the year 75. They really keep the traditions, they keep the language, and in their houses, we are speaking only Romani. They even doesn't um, think uh, that they are, this is a natural phenomenon in this case. And they are really very well integrated and socially, economically, they're integrated. And we have also the Russian uh, diaspora, which is in France, and they keep also the tradition, the culture and the language, and they're totally integrated economically and socially. This is one of the category of the migrants which preserve and keep the Roma language and identity and they don't are in shame of this. The situation with the person who uh, come in France during the war, 1989 and 99, from Kosovo, Macedonia, Serbia, their situation is very hard here because they are asylum seekers they have to apply for different procedure and they don't know they don't uh, know if they will obtain a positive answer from the commission for refugee uh, seekers for asylum seekers in france and they are here really temporary but once they obtain uh, legal papers and they have a legal staying here they keep also the language and the tradition and they start to be integrating in the learning, uh, learning French language, in trying to find some job. 
and they are keeping Romani language and identity. They are not consciousness that they are keeping this. This is a phenomenon, natural, natural phenomenon. And the situation, the economic migrants after the, their country joined the European Union, what is the situation when this, when this category of migrants? This is the migrants, uh, most of them are the Roma from Romania and from Bulgaria. In this category of migrants, we have a Roma people who doesn't want anymore to speak Romani language. Why? Because they say that they don't have any benefits of this. They are they even their children don't speak Romani, don't speak the local language from their country or origin country. And even they are really very uh, speaking very bad French language. But they say the Romani language doesn't uh, uh, he, uh, give us any material um, advantage. So they don't want to speak Romani language and they don't want to, to say that they are Roma. The human um, factor here is re related totally only with the material interest. They're only uh, interested to grow up material with uh, uh, to, to have more money, to have better life. And they want to be uh, really as the population, they don't want to make distinction between them and the majority population. They want to be, uh, I don't, if I can say assimilate it or, and they don't feel uh, the preservation that is very important to preserve the Romani language and uh, uh, identity. In this case, they don't feel that this is important. We have also the case, the same case with the uh, uh, Romanian migrants. Some of them don't want anymore to keep uh, Romani language and, uh, um, Roman identity because they want to be integrated here to find a good job to have a better situation and to be totally integrated in the society. Uh, in their opinion, they think that it will be an obstacle for them to keep the Romani language a tradition and to be uh, totally integrated. So this is the different category of the uh, migrant situation uh, of Roma people in the case of uh, France. And we have also, during the last years, we have a lot of beggars, a lot of people who are uh, sleeping in the street, who are really in the social category, very bad social category. And uh, this is also the migrant, not, not uh, more of them are uh, from Roma origin, but they are from the East country. They are the, they're coming from the East country. And this became really uh, after the, uh, their country joined the European Union. We have also this uh, kind of uh, migration this uh, last year uh, in, um, in the West country. How we can ensure that they keep uh, their language and identity? Uh, to keep the language and identity, it's, uh, I think this is a personal choice. They have uh, uh, to be agreed on this, the family has to be agreed on this, and has to be in the language and the preservation of language and, uh, and the identity has to be uh, important values in the family. They have to be consciousness that this is important to keep, it doesn't matter when we are living and uh, in which country we are. We are, first of all, we are Roma, so this is the most uh, important things, but this is a personal uh, and uh, familiar uh, thinking and choice at the beginning. And uh, uh, not more of them are consciousness that they are losing the language and they are losing the culture uh, uh, in living in another country. Because we have also the cases when in Bulgaria or in, uh, in, in uh, Romania or uh, uh, doesn't matter which country they are, they don't speak anymore Romani, even they're in the, their country or in home country, 
uh, in Bulgaria, we have a lot of South Bulgarian people who doesn't want anymore to keep language and culture. And this is really very bad. And this is uh, the last years what has happened because they don't want, uh, I don't know if their consciousness on, on this, but this is a, a, a real phenomenon. Not only the Roma migrants, this is also the Roma who are staying in a home country. The language and the identity is the question of values and of choice of family and consciousness. If they are consciousness that they're losing or they have to keep the language because this is important for their identity and for their existence and for their repair. repair. So how we can, uh, 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 ex uh, which are the ex expectations and criteria for success in the case of migrants? How we can measure that one migrant on uh, in the case on Roma is successful? Which are the criteria to uh, to to say that we're successful? Does become more rich, have a better life, the social status grow up, or that we are losing language, we are losing culture, we are losing identity? So this is uh, uh, it depends on the criteria that the people has in mind on their plan when they decide to, meet, uh, to, to, to go in another country or to stay in a, in a home country. Some uh, Roma family uh, choose to keep language and other decide to do not speak anymore. As I said, the reason are that they want to find job, they want to have a house, they want to be integrated. They don't want anymore to suffer of discrimination uh, uh, related with their origin. They said we had enough in our country. Some of them are uh, coming from communist country and in the communist country, they were suffering a lot on, the, on discrimination related with their origin. So well, now they're in abroad, they have to deal, to, to fight in abroad as you are born in a, uh, again when we are in abroad. This is a second, uh, this is a second born for the person when you migrate. This is the second, you are born second, second, second time. And some of them said we don't uh, want anymore uh, to have anything with the Roma language and a Roma identity. It's enough for us. We have, we want to have a better life to live as the others. Why we are not different? We are not animals. We are a, a human being. So, and they don't see uh, uh, that the Romani language and the preservation and the identity is something benefits for them in their thinking, of course. But the consequences is that their children are not even in the case, they're not French, they're not Bulgarian, and they're not anymore Roma. So this is a question of reflection. I only put the piece here on reflection because this, um, this topic which I developed today merit uh, a lot and deep reflection and discussion. I only give you the I only underline the most important things related with the preservation of the Roma language and Roma identity. And the consequences in this case are that they're really lost. They are going to their home country, the children doesn't speak anymore Romani, anymore Bulgarian, and even they're speaking a bad French. This is one case. The other case is as a people from Kosovo, Serbia, Macedonia, who are living here since 17, 18 years, two generations, they have a house, they are settled, to totally integrated, and they keep Romani language, they keep uh, Romani identity, and they are living very well as, uh, as French, as Roma, and when they go to their how, uh, home houses as Serbian or Macedonian, they have a multi multidisciplinary identity. This is the question uh, today, which we po uh, can pose as identity question and multidisciplinary question. Angela Jose was working a lot on this topic: how we can live with 
different identity and uh, how we can be integrated in a different society and keeping, of course, our first identity. What was, which is the, in this case, is Roma identity. As Bayer said, we are not on, we don't have one identity, one natural identity who can be imposed to us. We can, uh, uh, by force, we can a different uh, strategy of identity, which we are using in a different case. And we can preserve our own identity and have another, in addition, another identity. But some of the people can't understand this because it's a, a merit a deep reflection and you have to be consciousness on this, that you are losing, losing your identity. And that is important for you, of course. Everything is uh, go, uh, good for now. I'm speaking uh, quickly or it's okay for you? You, you, you follow me well? Yes, yes, you can. Uh, what is the situation on scholar process when the migrant people in the guest country? What what is happened when uh, with their children? Where children are put it in the class of migrant children because they don't have the same level on French and they can go in a normal school with the other children because they're uh, economically, they're not um, established and they can pay uh, special courses for their children in order to have the same uh, level on the language and to go in the normal classes. This is the category really on, of economic migrant in France. And uh, the parents can help their children because they don't speak uh, uh, well, French, and in the most of ca the cases, the children help their parents with the language because the children uh, 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 start to learn uh, uh, be, uh, before the parents, and they are really the key uh, for the parents, and they help their parents with the uh, language. This is what, what this is one of the cases. The second case is the, with the uh, asylum. So when they obtain officially the papers and they can stay here as a refugee with the official documents and paper in the legal way, their children can go in the normal school. They can be really uh, 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 integrated uh, totally with the French children, but they have the parents have to have the uh, status have to have the um, their paper and have to be. Uh, legally here. When the parents are not legally here, the children can go to school because by the French law, the school uh, is uh, obligatory and uh, the health service also. So we have access to the health service and we have access to the uh, school. This is the obligation by the French law, but we don't have a house because if you don't have a papers, we can have a, a house. And if we don't have a papers, you can have a job also. And if you don't have a job, you can have a, a house. Everything is related, but the children can go to school, they have right to go to school, but they don't have where to sleep and they don't have what to eat. This is the direct situation. How is the change? How we can analyze the change? How, what is happened? What the uh, 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 Roma is uh, in, in a new uh, country? If there is any change and uh, is it positive? or is it negative? How we can measure the uh, positive or negative? It depends on the person, of the personal's uh, uh, choice of the person, what he wants or what she wants. Uh, uh, if the situation is changing only material, she can be satisfied because if she wants this, only this, it's, it's enough, it's very good. Is it positive? Yes, but if the person are only grow up in the material well and lose identity, lose culture, lose everything and doesn't know anymore what is, is it? If, it, if it, 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 it is positive or negative, it depends on the person and on his or her consciousness. If he's um, 
if he or she plant uh, for her this how how uh, she achieved this or uh, and if he, he or she is satisfied and how is feeling how is it's uh, it's going we have also the, the cases and the situation of the degree of socialization in a, in a, in the country which we migrated the uh, degree of socialization is uh, we have the cases when uh, somebody comes here to get married or to have only a work, but at the age of 25, 27, or 30. How is going the situation? They have a work, they are working, but they don't have any friends. They don't have any social uh, circles because it's very hard to establish a social workers in a in a time when you have 30 or 27 in a in a new country it's a very difficult process and we have a lots of uh, bulgarian family here uh and uh, they're really suffering because they say we have a, a economical situation we have a work but we have only our children on our small family. We don't have a friends, we don't have anything, and we are really not socialized in the new country. This is one category of the uh, example of socialization. Um, how when the person are succeed in the in the new country if he help the other people from his origin if he is going or she is going to uh, her home country and she is helping because she attends some success she is successful and uh, uh, or this if i don't know if uh, a lot of people who are migrate when they go to their home country they say the true how is the situation with the migration this is very difficult to be integrated you have to start to learn a new language you have to to start to um, to learn the new regulation in the new country how is the law how is the rules all these difficulty and all these obstacles uh, that we have how is the, the situation when you are as a migrant in a new country? And um, the migration is not always uh, totally useless. We can have a bad uh, situation of the migration. And we have also a good example when we have a Roma people who emigrate in the, this country, studied, uh, work it and they're totally integrated with Roma people, with French people, or with different uh, kind of uh, nationality. And uh, this is the, the example of uh, the successful um, uh, migration. How, uh, how is the situation, as I said to you, with the uh, Roma from Serbia, Macedonia, Russia, they're here since 20 or three, uh, two or three generation, and they're keeping fully Romani culture and identity. How they can live their identity here? We can live our identity as keeping our language, keeping our tradition, making our marriage in a, in a cultural way as we are doing this, and living totally integrated in the new country. Um, this is the case on the Roma people from Russia, Macedonia, Kosovo, and Serbia. But uh, the migrant from Romania and Bulgaria, most of them, they don't want anymore to keep Romani uh, language and tradition because they consider that they are not uh, beneficial for, for them or uh, for their integration in a new country, as is this the case in uh, France. I gave you also the examples of for the asylum seekers, for the economical migrants, and uh, for the migrants without legal situation and without documents and papers. And of course, the situation at the beginning, the status of the migrant uh, uh, has direct reflection of his situation in a new country or his or her integration in a new country because the situation of a migrant who has a paper in some country is not 
the same as the people uh, as the person who doesn't have uh, documents or who doesn't have a legal situation or the person who are here to study and the person here uh, he, uh, who are here only for eating and uh, to benefit all, only for social uh, uh, help or for social services we have a different category of different migrant and a different categorization on a different social status on them. And of course, uh, everything is related to their uh, situation, but the preservation on Romani language and identity is not absolutely related with the social situation. This is the personal uh, choice. This is the consciousness, and this is the va important values. If for you it's important to keep Romani language and identity, you can keep it, the uh, social status can any impact for this. This is my personal opinion, and this is my also, uh, my work and my research and all my uh, job which I have done here with them when I did a different kind of research uh, uh, to uh, different topics of the access to health service, access to asylum seekers, because as though I'm working as an interpreter to the uh, Commission for Refugees, so I'm working with them and uh, I, I help them during all the process to obtain their papers. And I have also a different uh, uh, examples here from migrants from Bulgaria to come here to work or to come here only for economical reasons. And keeping language and identity is not related with this, with the situation economical situation. This is a personal choice. And this is also the same situation in the home country, because in the home country, a lot of Roma people doesn't want anymore to speak Romani language and identity. And here I use this opportunity because I have uh, uh, today the chance to give this lecture. And I, also, I want really to give an official appeal to Roma, if they are Roma who are hearing today me, please keep our language and our culture because when you lose one language and new culture, you are totally lost. You are totally lost as a human being. So I give this appeal for my brothers and sisters, please be conscious that we are in a process to lose our identity and our our grandmother, our grandfather were suffering a lot. Even during the Holocaust, our nation preserved our language and our identity. You can imagine how we are strong. So how many years we were uh, dealing with discrimination with different obstacles and we are today continue to be Roma. So, Today, the, modern, the modernity which we are uh, having is, is another aspect of the society which we can use, but please, this, this is not, if you don't speak Romani and keep your language, you will not be more modern or more rich. Because the Rama answered to me, we don't have a benefit. No when we are speaking Romani or when we are keep our tradition is not related with the beneficial material. This is a, 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 a personal uh, identity question, which is very important and it's really uh, very deep in us. It, 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 it's, it's, even it's, we, we don't have to have such kind of discussion, but this is a recent phenomenon. And uh, when we go to our country, home country, the people doesn't speak anymore Romani. The Romani language is in 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 a, in a, in, a, in a stage to 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 die slowly. Please, because they don't want to be another's. No, we can be what you are, and we can have in addition different identity. And this is the multidisciplinary identity, which is the most. Uh, uh, this is uh, which is a great thing, and this is the most the most you are more rich when you have different identity and when we are dealing with them and when you are speaking of course different languages so but this is only my last appeal that i lost uh, 
to say, I want you to say for uh, all the people who are hearing today this lecture and this conference, Doven Bachtale, Sasteveste, Te Mate Bisterena Marichip, Te Kova Susan. Thank you for your attention. And I'm ready now to answer for all of your questions. Please, you can ask me if you have some questions. Yeah, I had a question. Oh, Thank you very much. Uh, uh, Dr. Kirilova, yes, uh, I think we have uh, Punita Ji as the first question. Go ahead, Punita Ji. Okay. Uh, salut, Diana. Um, I have a question about the carnet de circulation or the livret de circulation. And I know that one of them was abolished in, um, in I think, eight years ago, where the, this is a little booklet that all the Jean de Voyage, all the nomads had to have stamped every three months. And so it was a way of controlling them in their movement through France, and it was very obviously discriminatory. And so um, the new version of it, is that still around? And, uh, or, or in 1912, there was an anthropometric kind of booklet yes. which actually led uh, Roma to the camps. And so now, um, you know, in the modern age, again, we have biometrics. So my question is, is there still some kind of um, sin, like insidious control that is going on with the Jean de Voyage in France? Uh, officially, there are not control with the Jean de Voyage of, uh, in France, but they don't have a uh, legal right to, uh, to, to stay in a terrain. They, in, uh, to stay in some terrain or to, to be with uh, their caravans, they have to have the agreement for the mayor of the city because they can stay officially. And the carnet de circulation last uh, destroyed totally and the uh, anthropomorphic um, also, but they are restricted. Their children can't go to the normal school and they have the uh, scholarization of their children in the camion caravans. Officially, these documents doesn't exist anymore, but they have the uh, internal restriction and they don't have a right to circulate in a um, uh, librement, uh, to circulate as they want. Freely. No. Mm. Yes, freely. Uh, they. The carnet de circulation doesn't exist anymore, but they have a really uh, um, very uh, in, in the city. The police, uh, the policemen can uh, make controls, and they, when they install themselves, they are not really uh, legal to stay. But uh, uh, these last years, we have the commission for the government, which are working, which are is, is calling Dihal. They are working for the. Uh, uh, the Roma uh, integration and the socialization on the Roma uh, people here, but they are working only with the migrants. So they construct officially a city with a, as a barrack, as a house, and the Roma are uh, installed there. But the Jean de Voyage, this is the uh, Roma from France, they don't have this right to enter in these social houses. They choose to live in the caravans and they are moving from this city to another city, but they have to the, have the legal permission from the city to stay and to install their caravans in the city. Without this permission, they can go. And when they have the permission, with this permission, they can make the inscription of their children in school. Their children can go to school, but they are staying three months six months because they're obliged to move for their work and the children are not scholarized. So the children has the scholarization, which is the camion scholarization. And as this is the program from Médecins du Monde, they send the camion with teachers which uh, are studying the children only to write and to read. And the children doesn't have any diploma, any papers official and they, can't go to the normal school after that. This is a kind of discrimination also because the children are totally um, analphabet. They don't know to, they know only to write and to read. 
And this is the camion scholarization, which is uh, developed by different programs by Medicine Dumont. This is a different, another kind of uh, discriminal measures, if we can say, in this case, related with gender voyage and uh, uh, les, the Roma people from France. Um, is there also an impact on voting rights if you don't have a, a fixed domicile? Uh, uh, no, they can't vote if they don't have a domicile, uh, a, a, a fixed domicile. They don't have any rights to, to vote. So then that's really, I mean, that means the discrimination continues. It's... I'm not the person who can say if continuous, uh, that discrimination all, always existed everywhere in different forms and only changed uh, the form but there are always discrimination, unfortunately. But uh, now the situation is changing because the governments really try to help, but uh, they develop a lot of program related with Roma migrants and uh, uh, from uh, Romania and Bulgaria. They st uh, really develop a lot of program in a different city in France and uh, start to, to help them socially with the schooling, with the workers, they help the parents. And this is a very positive uh, point. But I think that uh, with the years, the situation will change, but slowly, slowly. We have to, to have a really a official representative at the government and the political state that they can deal with this issue for the situation for, this is a, a, a situation which is related with the, their status, uh, official status, uh, how they recognize uh, the gender voyage. Uh, if they, because uh, we have also the case when the gender voyage don't want to have a, a fixed domicile fix. They don't want to stay uh, in the same place all the time. There is, this is uh, their own choice. They said, we can, uh, you can change my, uh, uh, a way of living. We, we have a different uh, cases, but the situation is going, um, going slowly in a positive way regarding the situation on Roma uh, people in Jean de Voyage in France. It's, it's a hard question everywhere, but it's the, the government now is really open and they, they recently even organized a conference uh, related with the discrimination on Roma people. This is something very positive and very important. Merci. Uh, hi, Diana. I have a question. Uh, I found that the Roma, those who are not integrated in France are in very horrib horribly poor situation. In case of Montreuil, uh, there was an expulsion of Roma people uh, from Montreuil in 2012. And still the situation in Montreuil, there's some people who are integrated, they are, their children are going to, uh, attending the schools uh, properly in a proper manner. Uh, but those who are not integrated, uh, they are uh, living in a very pitiable situation. Even the Roma from uh, Calderes, from Romania, and the people uh, Roma from Bulgaria, uh, their situation is uh, horrible, and uh, uh, they they are not receiving any aid uh, from the municipalities or from uh, the NGOs which are supposed to support the Roma community, uh, those who are in pitiable situations, as well as. Uh, in a bond day, the, uh, you can find the Romani girls the begging at the church, near the church. So uh, the situation, uh, is the integration policy uh, in France completely uh, went fiasco, failed, or uh, the Roma themselves, uh, they are not uh, deliberately uh, ready to get integrated in the mainstream society? So the integration, I find that the integration is the solution to the uh, situations, the poor situation of the Roma community, especially in France, as you said that uh, the even the government uh, trying to, uh, uh, government organized the some conferences and the sensitization program to sensitize the Roma people and try to integrate uh, socially or economically in the mainstream society of France. Uh, I'm not talking about any eastern uh, part of France or southern part of France where the situation are very poor uh, of the Roma community. Even in the city, even in the suburban suburban area of Paris, the Bondi, the 
uh, the southeastern part of Paris, even in the Montreux in the eastern part of Paris, uh, the uh, the Roma who are living there, they are they are in uh, in a sorry figure, and and uh, they are they are not having even they are you know means the um, uh, without food or uh, they beg and they they go without even a morsel of food, uh, the two morsel of food in, in a day. So what uh, what you find that the why there is a you know even you find that the uh, Roma people from Serbia and Russia they are well integrated they are well to do and they are doing uh, good and they don't and these are the people who are losing the ethnic identity of the Roma community those who are not integrated they are preserving and maintaining the uh, ethnic identity of the Roma community such as the Kaldresh from Romania and the uh, Bulgaria people, uh, Roma from Bulgaria, they are preserving, they speak in a, a Romani language. They, uh, they uh, physically and uh, they physically appear to be a uh, typical Roma or the Roma, uh, uh, Romani or Romney. So those who are integrated, they are well-to-do, they are doing good in their lives. They are hiding their identity. They are losing their identity. They don't want to speak in the Romani language. They are losing the Romani language. The Romani language becomes, you know, uh, as a something uh, souvenir when, or as a something exotic when they are in family, they may talk to, or they gather in any event, they may talk to in a Romani language, but day-to-day um, -day life in professional or in a public life or in a, in a personal life, they are, uh, not interacting or communicating in Romani language with one another. So what your take that integration, to some extent, that's a good for the uh, for enhancing or improving the situation of the Roma community, socioeconomic situation of the Roma community, or uh, after the integration, uh, uh, that causes the loss of the ethnic identity of Roma community? In my opinion, as I said before, the preserving Romani language and the culture is not related with the integration or, or social issues. This is a personal uh, reasons, and it is not related with the social status. When you are speaking about the Roma in uh, Montreux, Bondi, and uh, these areas in Paris or in France, and, and their integration, uh, you have to understand, as I said, when I start my presentation, do the migration that you have dreamed is reality. Most of this category of Roma people, when they migrate, if they didn't have any idea what does it mean to be in a abroad in, in a new country. And in a, a lots of cases, this is the social category which is the very very low they're even very poor in their home country and they decide to go in another country and they said in another country when we will find some solution to eat or to have a better life their integration in france the case in france is really very hard because they have to answer to different regulation, which are uh, as are uh, they are an obligation in a new country, and they don't can't fool these rules. Then they don't can enter in this regulation. This is the reason why they are sleeping in the street because to have to pretend to have a house, they have to have a job. They have to have a work. And to have a work, you have to speak the language. You have to be to have a profession. You have to, to, to be qualified. Even really the, 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 the very simple job they can't obtain. So they stay in the street. This is the category of the uh, uh, we can uh, uh, identify the different category of social uh, immigrant. This is one category of social immigrant from the home country that they are uh, very poor in their home country. They, they, when they come here, they think that with the, joining the European Union, it was that the, the, uh, they don't have a visa. They don't have uh, an obligation to have a visa to come here, but they can stay there. There an internal regulation in the French case, we can stay 
three months without any documents, without any visa. So, but when you stay three months here, you have to, uh, to be able to pay your staying here or for why you, you come here to find a job, to be a social immigrant, to, to be as a tourist. This is, uh, we, we joining the European Union, we, we don't have only a visa, but the internal regulation continue to exist as it was with the uh, carnet de circulation and the, the carnet anthropometric with the Jean de Voyage. Today, they don't have any more of these uh, documents, but they continue to have an internal regulation. They don't have uh, to be settled in the um, terrain when they want, in the place they want. They can, they, they are not uh, uh, have a right to go to vote fully. So, and in a free way. So as you, uh, as you can understand, um, that their social in, uh, integration of this category of migrants it's uh, related with their uh, status with uh, their official status and possibility to stay legally in the states and to stay legally in the states they have to be able to answer of the internal regulation they are not able to answer of the internal regulation and criteria and this put them in this a really bad situation but even they're in this bad situation they they prefer to be in this bad situation and to do not go back to their country the french state starts to elaborate a program to help them in order to integrate them and it's it's going slowly and there is a lot of family who are integrated put it in a social uh, houses and a and flat and uh, 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 um, a place with uh, uh, the new construction, but it's going slowly, and uh, in, and it depends also of a lot of criteria. We can't apply for uh, to enter and to be uh, to be eligible for all these criteria, and this uh, makes us the situation is as we have this pictures of this kind of migrants, which is really very, very, very sad. And uh, when you see this, you, you can say how it's possible in 20th century to have such kind of situation. But unfortunately, we have it. So the integration, it depends on the internal regulation and on the social status of the immigrant. And the preservation on Roma language and identity is not related with this. This is two separate things. All right, thank you. So anyone else? Uh, I just wish to check, uh, are there some initiatives which the uh, Roma community in those countries or those areas who have been living there for centuries, helping out uh, the new uh, recent arrivals? Uh, we don't. Uh, we have an initiative as uh, to organize the Ramani Day on uh, 8 April. We make a um, different evening with the Romani poesy. Especially, I'm organizing this with the uh, uh, Culture Center of uh, Language here, the House of Language uh, uh, in Paris, with the House of the uh, Poesy uh, in Paris. But we are organizing a cultural events and. Um, uh, the events are related with the commemoration on 2, uh, 2 August and with the uh, 16th of May with the Insurrection Gitan, which is organized by the association La Voix des Roms. And we have a, a, a different initiative, but uh, uh, they are related more with the cultural uh, signification. We don't have an initiative internal to help the other Roma community in the bad situation. We can have some initiative, but this is a personal initiative. We are organizing to give the clothes, to give uh, help, but this is a personal case. In the, organizing a big initiative to help the, the, the 
Roma who are in a bad situation that we don't have really official situation, uh, official initiative. We have the association who are helping, uh, La Voix des Roms, who are helping a lot uh, um, the Roma, but uh, the Roma themselves, who are really very well integrated and socially very well uh, integrated, we don't have a personal such kind of initiative we don't have to, to help the others. As is, as is the example of the Jewish people, they help their brothers and sisters. We, 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 don't, we, we have a help, but is, this is a personal case. It's not a big initiative to help our brother and sister who are in a bad situation here. But is the situation that you mentioned about France, does it also exist in say Germany or Italy or other places? for the uh, recent uh, migrants from uh, Roma community? I can't speak about Germany, Italy, and uh, the Abata. Uh, most of Roma people who are coming here are coming from Germany, from Italy, and they're saying that they have also a very bad restriction and a regulation and they can answer. They are living uh, in a very far from the city in Roma, in, uh, in, uh, in Germany, <coughs> sorry. And they are coming here, but they are trying here to apply as a asylum seekers. But uh, they, they are, they are uh, they are uh, fast on uh, different obstacles on this country because the immig their migration is not so easy. In order to be integrated, they have to answer to the different rules and regulation, and the rules and the procedure are very hard. And unfortunately, the Roma people are not able to answer fully on this uh, regulation. They are not. This is for different category of migrants, which is related with their social status and with their educational status. Because if one Roma is uh, educated, if he has diploma speaking different language, he can move really uh, free in a, in a free way in a different country and uh, uh, start to be integrated because he answer for every every rules he answer to the regulation on the country but th that category of uh, most of the Roma population are not in these cases they can't answer fully on this on these rules and they're totally rejected and they're discriminated and they're living as the beggars on the street and they don't have even what to eat but this is a different category of social migrants and uh, in the case on Roma people. Everything is related with their social background from their home country. If they are poor in their home country, they, it will be very hard to, uh, to be totally and fully integrated in the new country because they have to answer for the regulations. And the legislation Thank are you. very- uh, Do that, anyone else has any comments, any questions? Um, may I ask another one? Yes. Yes, Punita Ji. Hanji. Um, yeah, Diana, I'm also curious about intergroup relations, like uh, older Manush who've been in France longer and then the new immigrants the relationships between them, is there also some sort of within Roma discrimination that goes on for people who arrived earlier and people who have come later? Uh, the connection with these people, uh, when you are speaking for Manush, this is a, a different uh, uh, subgroups on uh, Roma people. And uh, most of the cases, they don't have a, a, an internal contact between uh, uh, them because the Manouche say that they are not Roma. The Jean de Voyage say that they are not uh, uh, Roma. And this is another internal questions uh, uh, 
So they don't consider themselves as uh, Roma uh, people and they don't want to be in contact with the uh, Roma migrants from, uh, from the east of country. But the people who immigrated here from the east of country, but uh, during the 75 or 99, they're in contact with the, uh, the new uh, Roma migration. But the Roma settled here from Manouche, Jean de Voyage, they, they are, no, they are even not visible. Uh, even they don't want to, to, to consider themselves as a, a Roma. But this is another question which is related with the uh, Romani identity and related identity to Roma people, which we had a seminar which were organized by the Council of Europe in the 2002, 2003 about this question and this is the difficulty of these questions because the Manouche, uh, les gens de voyage, uh, they don't want to say that they are Roma. This is the different category and side on Roma, but some of them are speaking Romani. I, 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 I personally, I had uh, cases when I spoke to them, but I went uh, officially to uh, to them. The contact was not uh, natural. I was presented, introduced, and etc. It's not so easy. But they come from the same stock. I mean, Manoush and Roma. C'est la même, no? Yes. La même song? Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. C'est la même. This is a very. Uh, Les mêmes racines? Yes, yes, yes. This is, uh, this, this is a very deep uh, uh, reflection. Uh, this question is very. For, for me, it's clear. For me, it's clear, and but for them, it's uh, it's uh, it's a I don't know. It's a, it's a political question. This is a, a question which is related with the context of where they were living, how they uh, lived their identity, because the Jean de Voyage from France, uh, most of them don't speak anymore Romani. and they say we're well, not Roma. Why you you say that I'm Roma? And I say yes. We are, all of us, we are Roma, but the politics, uh, we were living in a different country. We had a different history. We had a different uh, political uh, government. We had a different uh, history. So our position is different, but we are, uh, we are one nation, one people. So there is, some of them lose language, some of them keep language and some, uh, some of them keep also the old professions, so they continue to 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 exercise the old uh, Roma profession, and they are going from city to city. They move, they are free, and they and they say this, they live they live this uh, way of living, and nobody can impose to them to be settled. Nobody. For me, these people are Roma, but they were called Jean de Voyage in France because of their way of living, but they're Roma. Because in Bulgaria, for instance, before the uh, uh, 45, we were also moved from one city to another. We were, we were also Jean de Voyage, but the politics imposed to us to be settled. So we were lived uh, in the houses because it was a political dealing to, to, to have the control, control to us, to uh, try to assimilate us with another people. We were also gender voyage in the past, but the, the politics changed our uh, style of living. So all of us are Roma in, uh, um, in my opinion, but this is a question which uh, merit, uh, we, we, we have to have debate on this question and we have to have a seminar on these questions and to invite Manouche, Jean du Voyage, Roma, different uh, subgroups and to speak about our, uh, their uh, identity because uh, we are Roma, but I'm from a group of Kalaiji. I have a friends who are Jambas. I have a friends who are Chergar. We have a different group. This is the question of subgroups, which is related with our dialects, our profession and our tradition. But this is an internal question. But all of us, we are Roma. I can't say that I'm Kalaiji and I'm not Roma. I'm Roma from Kalaiji group. 
it's different. And we can say I'm Rom I'm French, Roma, but I'm a person who is moving, who is living in this place, going to another place. This uh, things um, uh, has to be debated. We have to organize the seminars on these questions and to invite the people on different subgroups uh, uh, and, to, and to ask them how they are living their own identity, which is their dialect, Romani dialect, with their own tradition, uh, this practical their religion, because we have a Muslim, we have a Christian Roma. This is internal differences, but it doesn't mean that we are not Roma. We are, all of us are Roma. If the Manush don't declare themselves as Roma, that means the census numbers will not be accurate. As I said to you, uh, as I said, uh, when I start to, to, to give my an explanation, they don't want to consider themselves as a, a Roma, but this is a personal question because they don't have uh, an information about, in general, about our population. Uh, uh, we had a, recently we had a seminar when uh, the Elizabeth Clanet organized and uh, she shows how the Evangelian movement in France, they, uh, they tried to, to find um, a proximity with the Jewish people. They're going to the Israel and they said, we are a uh, 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 brother and sister to the, uh, Jewish people. Uh, Manush, I don't, uh, this is a personal question and I can't impose my, uh, my, my opinion about this, but for me, in, in my opinion, all of us, we are Roma and we're divided in subgroups, which is uh, the distinction between in the subgroup is the language, tradition, uh, and uh, practice of religion and the uh, practice on Romani dialect. But the Manush, they said, we are not Roma because they lost also the Romani language, some of them. But now, uh, for instance, now in Sweden, in, uh, in, in Sweden, we have a new phenomenon. The Roma migrants in Sweden, they uh, had a, a revelation to study Romani language. They are trying to find uh, the institution where they can uh, go to study uh, Romani to find their own identity. They feel this. They need this, and they made a reclamation officially that they want to do this, and they are totally socially integrated in a, in a, in this country. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Diana, for uh, your presentation, and also uh, uh, giving us details of uh, the recent migrant to Europe, especially to France. And in your, it was interesting to know that uh, the people who moved there as foreign workers in 1970s, they have integrated well as compared to the people who came in 1999 for, as asylum seekers. You also touched upon the, uh, the causes of their not retaining their uh, the uh, identity or the problems which they face discrimination the housing and other issues which they have to go through you also uh, gave us a good idea about uh, the the uh, initiatives which uh, the government is taking but which is very slow which uh, will take long time but at least that is positive that uh, the governments in europe and especially in france is aware about uh, the need for integration of this big ethnic minority in uh, France. So we, uh, it was good to know that uh, the situation is similar in most uh, other European countries uh, where the, uh, there has been a movement of uh, migrants, uh, Roma from Eastern Europe to the Western Europe. And uh, also the situation in their home countries like Bulgaria, Macedonia, or Serbia. And uh, this historical discrimination uh, is slowly is uh, hoping uh, that this will be uh, removed and they will be treated and they will be integrated. But we do uh, heard in previous lectures that in some countries the situation is getting deteriorated especially during the uh, recent uh, pandemic where uh, the Roma community suffered more as compared to the other communities. So these lectures do help us in understanding better about the Roma situation and the, uh, 
uh, which varies from country to country. But we are aware that uh, despite migration thousand years back, it is uh, the Roma community's uh, strength and their uh, will to retain and preserve the language and certain traditions. I'm sure uh, despite the economic and other problems which uh, the new generation is trying to achieve, there will be also a desire in them once they retain or once they achieve a better economic situation to, uh, to preserve and get back to their identity and retain their traditions. Because for a human being, retaining traditions and linkages with their past is very important. With these comments, uh, I once again thank you for an excellent presentation and thank all these uh, participants for their interesting uh, comments and their observations. We look forward to your support and cooperation in future lectures and also our initiative to reach out to uh, Roma communities across the world and to create awareness about Roma linkages within India. With this, I'd like to thank you all once again and hoping to see you in our future lectures. Thank you thank very you. much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for thank all, you. Of, uh, all of you. The blessa. The blessa. Thank you, Jadiri. How are you? Bye. Bye. Thank you. Person to men. Okay, Thank you, Diana. Thank you for uh, accepting our invitation to deliver this lecture thank you very thank much you. and looking thank forward you. to your future to your participation in the future conference and a lecture and other events thank you very much thank you for you also thank bye, you. bye 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 everybody thank you very much thank you thank you, thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you. Bye -bye.